pork porterhouse with like a dried fig saba sauce. I'm gonna throw a little sage in my brine. I've got salt, I've got sugar, I've got a couple of bay leaves. How about a little garlic fun stuff in there too? So all good stuff, you know, brining. What is it? The ultimate marinade. What can you put in there? Anything you want to. I'm gonna whack my garlic and get those in there and then we're gonna talk big meat. It's about a two to one ratio of salt to sugar. The sweetness kind of evens out our salty goodness. All right, oh, look at this. Hello, big meat. All right, pork, porterhouse, aren't you gorgeous? This just makes me a happy girl. But what you gain in tenderness, you lose in a little bit of flavor. Also, we're solving that issue by letting it hang out in the brine. So, right now, I'm doing a brine express. That's what we say when we do quick, quick things. With my pork porterhouse, I love saying that too, pork porterhouse, I'm going to do a dried fig and saba sauce. I'm dicing up some pancetta and I'm gonna start to render it. I'm gonna give it a little tiny bit of encouragement. Hello, I'm going to encourage you to just get lubed up and render out your fat. Okay, low and slow. We start from a cold pan on that one. Little hand wash, a little board wipe down. So I have some black mission figs here, about eight ounces. I'm gonna dice up if you wanna use black mission figs, brown Turkish figs, any kind of dried figs you find, it all works beautifully. I'm gonna quarter them up and I'm gonna soak them or macerate them in my saba. Mmm, my pancetta is smelling great, my favorite. All right, so I'm going to macerate my diced figs in some saba. You know what, I'm gonna do a, a little bit of QC. Mmm, it is just grapey goodness. It's grape syrup, actually, really. That's exactly what it is, and that's exactly what it tastes like. I'm kind of marinating my diced figs in the saba to get them all softened up. Macerating, that's what we say what we do to fruit things. And I have a... Beautiful smelling pan of pancetta, bacon, my favorite. And I'm just adding in a little bit of garlic and rosemary. Mm, so aromatic, it just makes me a happy girl. And now I'm going to add my macerated figs and saba. Mm, hello, beautifuls. Mm, wow. All right, I'm gonna bring that to a boil and I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer. So, dried figs, pretty sweet. Saba also pretty sweet. We have our salty bacon, but let's give a little acidic poke, a little, you know, brighten this story up action. So I'm gonna add a little drop of red wine vinegar just to really, you know, make our palate fresh and say, oh, when I eat that, I'm excited to take another bite. So, a little pinch of salt and a little spicy poke. Why? Just for fun. We're working on our pretty, pretty pork porterhouses today. My pretty pork that's brined. Mm. It's been soaking in my brine, which is a salt sugar water solution with a little bay leaf and sage and garlic. So I'm taking it out of the brine. Look at this. Hello, beautifuls. Mmm, my big meat ready to be tossed on my grill. So I'm just gonna dry these guys off, just give them a little pat, take off any excess water. Before I put these on the grill, I'm going to do some crushed red pepper. I don't need to salt them, why? Because we had the ultimate marinade, the brine. So all that beautiful salty flavor is right in there. Ah, oh, look at me, always thinking. So. A little bit of oil for my big meat. There we go. And I'm going to put these guys right on the grill. So I put it on one way and then I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees so we get those cross hatches. And they will look super sexy as well. All right, let's turn my pork chops. Look at grill marks one direction. Let's just change direction. All right, beautiful. After I do this, I'm gonna do the other side and I'm gonna really make sure that I get that fat edge, that nice, big, gristly fat edge just crisped up on the grill as well. That's like one of my favorite bites. Mm, right in there, it's delicious. So, my fig sauce, dried figs, a little saba, a little garlic, a little rosemary, a little chicken stock, it's been doing wonderful things. 
Oh yes, a little pancetta. That really has done a lot of wonderful things actually. Ooh, look at that. My pretty, pretty pork porterhouses. Grilled, I did the edge there. Look at that. Brown, smoky, delicious. They smell so good. So I'm gonna let these guys rest and hang out for a little bit so those juices will redistribute and stay nicey-nicey in there. Hello, beautiful. So happy to see you. So my pork porterhouse is two steaks going on here. Let's take the little strip steaky part off. One side of the bone. All right. We're gonna slice up a piece of that and the tenderloin also. We're gonna take that right off. Look at, and this is for me to chew on later. So I'm gonna slice this, oh, juicy, delicious, so aromatic and fragrant. That's all due to my brining. Love the brining magic. Now let's put a little sauce on this. And I am so ready to dig into here. Look at that, gorgeous, beautiful, sexy, and hugely flavorful. <laughs> And I know that because yes, I have tasted everything except for my pork all the way along. So let's go ahead and just get right in there and do that right now. Mm, mm, I'm a lover of the swine. Big pork porterhouses, brined, delicious.